Communication. Communication was one of the first things we developed in the early days of our world. This was necessary to enable us to understand each other, to cooperate, and to build societies. Communication today takes many forms. We use human to human communication, human to device communication, and device to device communication. The communicator develops a message, composes it, encodes it, and transfers it to others. The receiver reconstructs the message and interprets it in order to understand. But just how has communication developed over the centuries? Speech and writing. Our first attempts at communication were with drums, smoke signals, and body language. Later, people invented speech and language. People soon realized the need to record information for future generations through storytelling. As time went on, people at first drew pictures on cave walls, and later they cut pictures into stone and on clay tablets. The Egyptians invented paper made of papyrus for writing pictograms, pictures made to represent objects and actions. Over time, pictograms evolved into ideograms, which were symbols that represented an idea. For example, an ideogram of two sticks might mean legs, or it could mean walk. The Chinese and Egyptians evolved these into Chinese characters and hieroglyphics. The evolution of writing. The earliest writing systems were based on both pictograms and ideographs. Later, alphabets were formed. At first, everything was handwritten. Making a book could take months or years. In about 1450, the first printing press was made by Johannes Gutenberg in Europe. It could print books quickly. This gave everyone access to books and newspapers. The inventions of pencils in the 16th century and the typewriter in the 19th century both made writing faster and easier. And in the 1980s, the personal computer changed everything. It allowed us to edit or save documents for the future without retyping. Communicating with electricity. The discovery of how to use electricity enabled many new media technologies. Among the first was the telegraph, invented in 1837. The telegraph could send signals along wires across the country at the speed of electricity, but it needed skilled operators. The telegraph worked by connecting two machines with a long wire. A signal using Morse code would be sent from one machine to the other. Operators needed to code and decode the message. Then came the telephone. It allowed us to communicate by voice in real time over long distances. The phonograph, invented in 1877, could record voices and music. For the first time, audio could be recorded for future generations. Radio and TV. All the previous machines were private, from one person to one other or a few others. This changed with the radio. The first radio signal was sent in 1895. Radio signals allowed messages to be heard by anyone at a distance. No wires were needed. Television, invented in the 1920s, completely changed modern life. By the late 1990s, 98% of American homes had a television. Instead of reading books or pursuing hobbies in the evenings, people watch TV. Personal recorders and players. In the 1960s, people could buy handheld machines to record music or their own voice. They could make messages and share them with anyone. People had records, then cassettes, CDs, and MP3s. Personal music players allowed us carry our audio with us and listen to anything we wanted at any time. Video recorders were also developed. They allowed us to record shows from television or to make our own movies using video cameras. The Internet. 
The Internet was developed out of defense technologies in the U.S. in the 1960s through the use of email. By email, people could transmit personal messages like a letter sent through the postal system. Sending emails was much faster than the regular postal service. By 1990, the first web page had been invented. People were able to read content left permanently online in the form of web pages. The world's information could now be communicated easily and cheaply for all to access. People with computers could access information that was previously only available in libraries. Huge internet encyclopedias, dictionaries, video websites, and so on became available to everyone. The Internet 2.0 in the mid-2000s, the World Wide Web evolved. It changed from being passive, read-only, into active. Now users could leave comments online, create blogs, and upload material to video or social media websites. People created profiles and their own pages to share news, photos, and videos. They also commented on those of others. Other developments allowed voice over Internet, VOIP, connections, so people could make conference calls and communicate with many people all over the world in real time. <laughs> mobile phones In the 1980s, mobile phones began to hit the market, but they were big and difficult to use. By the late 1990s, the phones were small and light enough to fit in your pocket. They also offered email and some basic internet features. In the late 2000s, smartphones appeared with full internet access and applications such as games, maps, and music. These phones gave everyone immediate access to lots of information. People could communicate via voice, video, text message, social networking services, and email, to name a few. Augmented and Virtual Reality As computing power has increased, applications can now display images on a live video background of the real world in real time. With this technology, we can access additional digitalized information about the world around us. For example, our phones can display additional information about the food we see in the store as we shop. This is called Augmented Reality. Virtual reality is similar to augmented reality, but rather than telling us about a real physical environment, virtual reality creates its own world. It has its own sights and sounds. Perceptual computing One future emerging technology allows us to interact with computers in other ways rather than with a keyboard or voice. In perceptual computing, computers are programmed to recognize what is going on around them. For example, the perceptual computer can determine what needs a user may have as well as react to or receive additional information. This is achieved through depth sensors, cameras that give 3D vision, and an immersive experience. It can do facial recognition, hand and finger tracking, as well as speech recognition, making interactions seem not only natural, but intuitive. Wearable devices are another emerging technology. They can either enhance our natural abilities or restore something that was lost. These include ear devices that can help us hear a conversation happening 10 meters away while filtering out some voices and focusing on others. Wearable computer glasses can record our conversations or restore sight to some blind people. Other devices can listen to our brain activity and read our thoughts. Someday, we might be able to communicate from brain to brain. The Internet of Things in our future connected world, even toasters and fridges will become smart devices. They will communicate with each other using the Internet. This will make devices more effective and efficient. For example, a fridge will have sensors that will be able to know if we are running out of milk and order it for us. Our homes will learn our patterns of behavior and switch on lights and TV programs. 
Our phones will be able to tell us when to visit the doctor based on body scanning software. Huge amounts of data will be collected about our personal lives. This data can be used to improve the quality of the machines and their understanding of us. It can also be used to make our lives better. But the data collected will also bring up concerns about privacy and ownership of the data. Helpful or dangerous? These new communication technologies are exciting. They have the potential to aid humanity tremendously. However, there are dangers. Some of us might come to prefer our virtual worlds to our real lives. People might become too isolated, waste too much time, or care about the wrong things. Cybercrime might skyrocket too. Will we push back against these technologies? Will we decide to live with fewer computers? These are important questions for future generations to consider as new and more powerful ways to communicate are developed.